Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at potential difference in parallel circuits. We'll look at current in parallel circuits, resistance in parallel circuits. We'll look at an example of a parallel circuit and finish with a summary. Let's start off by talking about the potential difference in parallel circuits. Each component in a parallel circuit has the same potential difference across it as the power source. For example, if the potential difference across the cell is 5 volts, then the potential drop across each of the components is also 5 volts. Another way we could phrase this point is to say that the potential difference across all components in a parallel circuit are therefore equal. This interesting fact gives us the following simple relationship. The total potential difference, that is the potential difference delivered by the cell, is equal to the potential difference dropped across any one of the components. When I write uh, V1, what I mean is the potential dropped across the first component. Now let's talk about what happens to the current in a parallel circuit. When a parallel circuit branches, the current splits between the two possible paths. To see this on the diagram, let's call the current before the branching I, and the currents on each of the branches I1 and I2. Now we say that the current going into this point here must be the same as the current going out of that point, and we can write this in the following way. I, for the current going in, is equal to I1 plus I2. We can say something very similar at this point here, where the branches come back together. We say that when the branches rejoin, they must add back up to the total current. So I1 and I2 come back together again to make I. A very useful fact to remember is that if two branches contain identical components, then the currents through these identical components are the same. We have seen that the voltage across each branch is the same. We now know that the current through each branch is not the same. So we guess that the current must be related to the resistance of the branch. Let's now talk about resistance in parallel circuits. So if we have a circuit containing a single resistor and a cell, such as this circuit here, and then we add in another resistor in parallel, like this resistor here, the question is, what happens? It turns out that the resistance of the whole circuit will actually decrease. Why is this? A good way that we can try and understand this effect is to think about an analogy where we're trying to get a large number of people from one place to another. If you're trying to get a large number of people from one place to another, then if there was a thin corridor halfway through, then this would slow down the amount of people that you could get through at any one time. You can imagine that the resistor slows down electrons in the same way that the corridor slows down people trying to get from one place to another. Now one way which we could increase the rate that we got people from one place to the other would be to open a second corridor nearby. Some of the people could go through this corridor rather than the other one and we could double the speed at which people got from this place to this. So one way of thinking about this problem is to say that adding in the second resistor is like opening a new corridor that the electrons can use to get from one place to another. That means that the electrons can actually effectively get around the circuit faster. And in a sense, that means that the resistance of the whole circuit has decreased. We can summarize this point by saying that the reason the resistance of the whole circuit has decreased is that at the point at which the current splits in the parallel circuit, the current actually has a possibility of taking two paths. Now it's time to practice some of the concepts that we've learnt in this video. Let's try and analyse a parallel circuit. Let's imagine that our cell creates a potential difference of 6 volts. And let's label our components, which in our case are light bulbs, components 1, 2 
and free. The first question I want to ask is what is the voltage across component 2? To answer this question, you need to remember one of the first rules we said in this video, which was that in a parallel circuit, the potential drop across any of the components is the same as the potential drop on the cell. So the potential drop between here and here, i.e. the potential drop or voltage across component 2, is simply 6 volts. The second question is more difficult. The question is, if all lights or if all of these light bulbs are identical, how will the current split at junction A? So let's take a look back at this diagram. I have drawn an arrow here to show which junction I mean by junction A. Now the important thing to answer this question is that we said that the light bulbs 1, 2 and 3 are all identical or all the same. And this means that the current going through each of them will be the same. This must mean that of all the current that actually approaches the junction, one third of it will go through each branch. And this means that at junction A, because one third of the current is lost to the first component, the current that must go in this direction will be two thirds of the current. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE Physics and Combined Science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.